What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Crisis in the Toyverse. I am Bob O'Mac, and today we are looking at the NECA Alien Series 12 Battle Damage Blue Colored Xenomorph Warrior. Now, if you manage to say that 10 times fast, go ahead and give yourself that patent pat on the back. With that being said, here we are with another Battle Damage Alien from NECA, and I gotta say, I really love this version. If I had a gun placed on my head and I had to pick between this one and the brown colored, I'm gonna go with this one because it's such a unique head sculpt. Speaking of which, let me go ahead and bring that in right here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. If I get the camera to focus, look at all that blood and guts and alien excrement coming right out i mean this is just a fantastic sculpt there is nothing but praise to be sung about a sculpt such as this it just screams attention grabbing if you will that's what i really like about it uh, the detail is incredible as you can see right here it's just a very awesome job that NECA has done and like i have said in many reviews this is NECA's signature line, so you can tell there's a lot of love and care given to these action figures, and it definitely shows with this. Now, as for the rest of the figure, we got one other point of impact here. Done very nicely, looks very good as well. Um, as far as detailing and paint, um, I don't know if the camera really picks up the blue that well, but it's it's a darker blue, and it's done very nicely incredible detail on these guys like i said nothing short of amazing and it, the tail looks fantastic the legs the toes all of it very nicely um right before i go into articulation i want you to know that this plug does come out it's pretty standard for most alien figures and that will lead us right into articulation so in terms of the head with the plug removed you can go back that much, which isn't really a lot, but I can go back and it sort of goes down. You do get some side to side action on the head and uh, you can rotate it. Just of note, you see how the hoses are connected to the lower jaw. I've said this in the other review, but just be mindful of that. You wouldn't want it to rip out or anything. Now, in terms of the arms, they are on a ball hinge. And they go up that much. They can go back down, spin all the way around, no problem. You got a double bend at the elbow here, and it's got the swivel system with it. Uh, you also have a swivel and hinge at the hand that can go up and down, and you have a point of articulation at one of the fingers for extra attitude. And in terms of the upper body, it is on a diaphragm joint. You can bring it back that much, can move it forward that much, and you can get some side to side. So very, very nice. Arm is the same on the other side. Now can this one do the splits? And let's see here. It absolutely can. Kung Fu Fighter Extraordinaire. Uh, you have the ball hinge attached there and it's cut and hidden very nicely. No problems with movement there. Double bend at the knee. Always nice. And you do get a ball hinge at the foot that does uh, pivot. It goes down. It goes up. And the toe hinge moves all the way up and all the way down. Same on the other side. And now we come to the tail. It can swivel, but here's the cool thing. It can bend thanks to the bendy wire that's in there for even more fun dynamic posing. So all in all, a great amount of articulation despite excuse me, his head being blown off. Let's go ahead and do the size comparison and take it from there. All right, folks, here's a quick size comparison. We have Ripley on the left being bored to tears. And on the right, we have Private Ramirez ready for action. And in the middle, we have an alien that is having a bad day. So they fit in very nicely, as they should, because they're all from the same line. Bottom line is, if you had to pick between one or the other, I would definitely go to for this one. You just got more dynamic options in terms of toy photography or even display options or conversation pieces. They're both very nice, but I got to say I kind of like the blue oh, just a wee bit more. So that's going to do it for the size comparison, folks. Now let me get a few plugs out of the way. Huge shout out to the DTKC show for always showing love to this channel. Also, 
head over to BigBadToyStore.com. That's where I got these bad boys at. And it would greatly be appreciated if you could show them some love and support. And here's the cool thing. Pre-orders. You don't have to pay up front. You pay when it ships. Now, with that being said, also, Extreme Dash Sets. By now, you all know, I've been using all their backdrops in my videos for since I've started this channel. Go check them out at Extreme Dash Sets. You, if you're a fan of toy photography, if you want new ways to display your figures, head over there. Also, while you're at it, go to UndercoverCapes.com. It's where I call home, and you'll find everything you need in the world of geekiness in the podcast, being Marvel, DC, indie, video games, things of that nature. You you want to listen to something in the geek verse? They got you covered. And lastly, if you're on Instagram, head over to at Toy Lover Crew and throw a follow at Toy Lover Crew as well, and use the hashtag Toy Lover Crew. There's a lot of ads in there. Oh well. The point is, join in on this discussion, have some fun, and look at what some amazing people are doing with their toy photos. With that being said, thank you guys as always. Stay tuned at the end for the slideshow. And until next time, great googly